The first selector of the 2018 Five Under 35 ceremony is Colson Whitehead. Colson is the number one New York Times best-selling author of The Underground Railroad, which won the 2016 National Book Award for Fiction, the 2017 Pulitzer for Fiction, and the Andrew Carnegie Medal for Excellence in Fiction. It's only one of his many books. You probably know the others as well, John Henry Day, Zone One, The Intuitionist. So here's Colson to present the nice first honor. Woo! Um, what else done nice? Uh, we're giving all the writers uh, honor today, our faith, uh, our faith that with their abundant talent and perception, we're witnesses to the start of a long and wonderful careers. They have a difficult task. It's hard living in this country right now, and it's hard to write. Dayquil, drowsy formula, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, how do you out surreal a world uh, that's taken as surreal as its guiding philosophy? Deliver the news about where we're going and how we live now, when the nightly news is three steps ahead, outpacing the humble fiction writer's earnest imagination. With his marvelous debut, Nana Kwame Ajebrenya pulls off this precocious feat with 12 stories that revel in a new inventive form, style of grim warmth, mixing dystopic truth with undying empathy. How do you outsmart the world? By being that much smarter and nimble and gifted. Uh, so thank you, Nana, for your book. And here he is with a brief selection from his New York Times best-selling book, Friday Black. Not that old yet, 
Um, but everywhere I look, you know, I'm finding more and more to be grateful for. Uh, you know, I had to queer an agent again, and I called queer a different agent this time. Her name is Mayor Phil Simonoff. And, uh, and, you know, a little bit less psychosis. And so um, it was a lot more stable, and I'm happy for all the people, my, you know, my agent, my editor, my publicist, uh, you know, my guests who have come and have just been like really great grounding of people for me. My sister who's here um, got me a little Lenovo netbook when I didn't have a laptop in college. And I wrote about the first words I ever wrote on that. And um, you know, I'm very grateful to you as well. I said this earlier to you, uh, you know, Ghanaian, firstborn children, especially the women have to be moms kind of like five years old. And um, she did a pretty good job, I think. So um, I'm going to, just to read a, a very, very short passage, I'm going to read the very um, last page of the book. Um, spoiler alert, I guess. <laughs> no, uh, it's um, about uh, nuclear, like, um. <laughs> There's a faraway light, then a roar like long, slow thunder. The war doesn't stop. It gets louder, and then it's so loud you can't hear anything. The faraway light grows, and it's yellowish at first. In the beginning, it looks like it looks like something that's meant to help you, like another sun. Then it grows taller than any building, greater than a mountain. You can see it's eating the world, and no matter what, it is coming for you, rushing toward you. And by the time it's blinding, you are terrified and humbled. Watching it, you know it's the kind of thing you should only get to see once. Something that happens once and then never again. We've all seen it so many times, but I still cry. Because when it comes, I know for sure we are infinite. All you feel is infinite. Knowing all the falls and leaps and sweet and death that's ever been will be trumped by the wall of nuclear flying at you. You of all people. Then, before you're gone, you know all that's ever been will still be, even if there are no tomorrows. Even the apocalypse isn't the end. That you can only know when you're standing before a light so bright it obliterates you. And if you're alone, posed like a dancer when it comes, you feel silly and scared. And if you, and if you are with your family or anyone at all, when it comes, you feel silly and scared, but at least not alone. Thank you guys so much.